Richard Harris is the creator of the Neat Selling System. He is a consultant to startups and huge corporations alike. And here are his five steps to thrive in sales. So I don't know that it's why they care about, well, I guess it is why they care about our product, but what's really more important is why do they want to solve this problem, right? If I have a call today, one of my first questions will be, after I do a standard introduction, my respect contract kind of thing, is why are we having this conversation, you know, here at the end of, what is it, the end of September or middle of September versus May of this year? Like what's changed, right? And there's a couple of subtle things. You, you do have to be careful how you ask the why question. And I'm wrestling with this one myself, but the why someone wants to speak to you or the why they want to solve this problem is often way more interesting than what the problem is they're trying to define, right? I've often said that what is a noun and why is a reason. So we want to understand the reason for solving the problem. That's really what I focus on. The place where I'm wrestling is, you know, I'm a big fan of sort of, you know, what's the problem? Uh, can you tell me more about that problem? Why is it important to solve it? And how is that going to solve you? That's sort of been what I've learned and what I've taught and what I teach and, and I use it every day. And of course, I went along and read Chris Voss's great book, uh, Never Split the Difference. And he said something that has really stuck with me that don't ever ask the why question, because why is always defensive, no matter what language it is. He's done a lot of negotiations in multitudes of languages around the world um, and certainly far more interesting negotiations than our selling conversations. But that one's really been wrestling with me. I've, I've been wrestling with that one of, well, am I really putting people on the defensive when I do it? And I now that I've heard that, I think sometimes I do. So I'm very conscious of that. And I know Chris's point of view is to start to ask them a little bit more about what and how um, rather than why. So I don't know if I'm ever going to shift or change, but I definitely, being a student of sales, we always have to question what we what we do, right? If we're going to get better, even if we're super successful, I still got to question, well, gosh, I've been doing this why thing for such a long time. Should I still be doing it? I've been working on this thing where I, I do a disrespect contract of how I introduce a call and, you know, here's what we're going to talk about and here's your time and, you know, let's agree to if we're not going to like each other, we'll just walk away friends, you know, that whole respect contract thing. And then you need a good transition statement and you need to transition from the, okay, we've done the housekeeping stuff. Let's talk about the business. So I will ask a question. I'll ask, this is usually my transition question. It's either, so what made you want to take this call today? Or I will say, why are we chatting today? From your perspective, I know why I'm chatting. Why did you want to chat with Richard? You know, and for me, I don't as I that's how I've always sort of done it. And I don't think that I'm putting people on the defensive because by the time people are talking to me, guess what? They want to talk to you. Right. I think that's one of the biggest things that sales reps fear is that they don't want to ask too deep because they're afraid they're going to offend somebody. Well, I would say, look at it this way. Ask deeper, faster. They're on the phone with you. If they didn't want to talk to you, they wouldn't even be on the phone at all. So get to the point. Now, how you ask that question, your pace, your tone of voice, all those things absolutely matter. You know, so I'm always I'm always preaching the, you know, being naturally curious when you ask, uh, sound like you're asking for directions like, hey, you know, why, why? Just out of curiosity, I think I know why, but would you mind telling me why you wanted to chat today? Right. You acknowledge that, hey, I think I know, but I don't want to assume I know, which also helps people relax a little bit and they feel like they're going to be heard. And the sooner you can get to it, the sooner you can have a meaningful conversation. Right. If you start doing the dance of, well, what four things would you like to solve? What's keeping you up late at night? What can I show you in this demo? What, 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 which is what most people do. I think people cringe when they go through that part of a sales call. Right. But that's still what we do, because that's what we hear the guy next to us or the woman next to us doing. So. So the first thing I'll say is that my biggest goal for the audience today is just ask why one more time, just to ask it one time on a conversation, because what I'm about to explain is we'll go deeper and deeper and deeper. But I just want to get to get people comfortable asking that why question, because it does make people nervous. So for the audience, just ask why one more time. But I, I also teach this thing called the three wise men, which is asking why, why, why. So if I say, well, you know, why are we having this conversation today? Oh, because, you know, my sales team is struggling and, you know, I've been tasked with hitting this goal. OK, well, why is it important to hit this goal? Now, again, you've got to ask it a little bit more nicely than how I just said it. And they're going to say, well, 
because if I don't hit the goal, then we're going to miss the numbers and we're not going to be able to hire enough people or we're not going to be able to invest in the mobile app or whatever it is. So, OK. And, and, and just out of curiosity, you know, you're in sales. Why do you why do you want to invest in a mobile app? Why does the company want to do that? Oh, we see that such and such is the key to our growth and it's all about mobile and being OK. So the goal of our sales training discussion isn't just to improve the sales reps. It's to really help the company grow and get to this much bigger level. And people go, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, and it allows you to understand what they're really trying to accomplish. I think it also allows you to help them understand what they're trying to accomplish. Now, why do I have to go through three whys to get to that? No, not always. You can also sort of do the, the approach of, well, why do you want to solve these problems? Oh, our team's not hitting the goal. Oh, well, how's it going to affect you if you guys start to hit the goal versus not hit the goal? That's another way to ask why, right? So you can use what, why, how, can to always go deeper. Three wise men is just, you know, it's easy to remember. It's funny. It's creative. And it, and it just reminds you that you can always keep asking why. So that that's sort of when do you get to the right one? I don't know. Uh, you know, my biggest goal is to just get you to ask it one more time because I promise you'll have a better conversation. You need both. This is the part where you go fishing, right, where you kind of have to let the prospect take the line and, and run it out because they're not sure what they need. Because I will say why and you will get one of two answers. Well, why the answer you could get is, well, because it's my job. And if I don't, I'm going to lose my job. Right. That's a very personal thing. Or why it could be, hey, if I solve this problem, there's a promotion in 2018 and I want to make sure that I've solved this to really add to my personal and professional brand. So that's a personal why. You will also get the business why. Well, why does the business need it versus the you need it? It's very important that you uncover both, but let the prospect decide where they want to go with that answer because it's their mind you're working with and they've got to merge both the personal piece and the business piece. And once you've done that, that's probably when you've really hit a super solid foundation for your continuing your discussion because it happens all the time. And that is a question that comes up every time we talk about it in training. So if someone asks you about budget, well, how much does it cost? You want to be able to answer the question and then turn around and ask them a question. And one of the questions, and this is my favorite one, which is, so how does that make you feel? Because how you feel about when you see or hear pricing is something everybody relates to. So, oh, pricing is, you know, it's X for this. By the way, how does that feel to you? And you got to do it quick so that they don't have time to stop and think. Because oftentimes we'll go, well, it's um, a ballpark of, mm, uh, e, e, uh, you know, $25,000 a year. And then we're quiet and we were told to be really quiet and wait for their response, right? I don't agree with that theory. I say, oh, it's $25,000 a year. How does that feel to you? And now they're on the defensive and they're in the, uh, ooh, I don't know how to respond. Uh, and I want them to go under that pressure because I know their reaction to that is going to tell me where their head is around budget, right? You can also turn around and just say, oh, it's, and my, here's my theory. As soon as someone asks me price, I'm allowed to ask anything about budget. You went first, I go second. I'm okay with that. So, oh, it's $25,000 a year. How does that fit with your budget? Or how does that compare to the other things you're looking at in the marketplace? Which is really a question not about budget, but are they looking at my competitor? Anyway, we could go on on this one, but I, those are my tips for the crowd. Pause, rewind, listen to it again, write it down, whatever. Hey all, hope you enjoyed that one. Click up here to watch another five steps to thrive in sales video. Click down here to watch the full interview where all these clips came from.